All right, I am back at the cemetery today. Saturday, December the 10th, I believe, maybe the 9th. This will be my fifth headstone to clean here at um, Salem United Methodist Cemetery, a very special church to me here in Maryland, Brookville, Maryland. I've been visiting here for the past, um, well, about nine, 10 weeks or so. And uh, helping to uh, get my parents back on their feet after a few health issues going on, surgeries and stuff. And uh, I was here the other day cleaning the headstone of a four-year-old boy named John William. And I uploaded the video of me cleaning his headstone and then I took it down off my YouTube because I watched it and I didn't like the ways that I was talking. I was very um, emotional that day and very upset with my family. Not my family, <laughs> my siblings. Not my siblings, my sisters. I love my family. I learned a long time ago that nobody can ever steal our joy. And so I continue to, when I can, come to a cemetery to find peace. Today I have found this little headstone. I can't read anything on it. I've also learned not to assume anything in life, but it would look like this is a child's headstone as well. I don't know. Um, I look forward to unveiling your name and the date of your life and death and having a little conversation here at the cemetery. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. See what we can accomplish here today. I have cleaned hundreds and hundreds of headstones over the past many years. It is my greatest sense of peace. When you hear of soul searching, I come to cemeteries to search my own soul. And I'm always grateful to share in such conversation with souls who were once here in this life and no longer are. The thing I've learned about life is that, well, we're born with a mind and a body and a soul. And when we die, we leave behind our mind and our body, but our soul is what is eternal. Everybody's got their own beliefs. I never preach what I feel, but I do share. And so I've always believed out of all the 800, 900 headstones that I've seen, that when I'm visiting and cleaning a headstone, um, I really am sharing in a moment with a quiet soul. Um, who I can still feel through my own soul. I like to think of our soul as our little portal, our little database, our little main entry like a computer. Our soul is what holds everything. Memory. Love. This has been a very big journey for me. Very big, beautiful journey. Um, not that the... <laughs> Not that the health issues have been beautiful with my parents, but being here with my parents, for my parents, has been a journey I can only call epic. Epic meaning once in a lifetime. I'll never forget these past many, many weeks of my life. Gratefully, I will never forget. Because this time has allowed me to form, create, and share in a whole new light, a different relationship with my parents. I'm 50 years old. I've always loved my parents. But this has been a journey unlike any other. This was not just a visit. The entire journey has been unknowing. 
I first came and thought I was going to be spending a week here. And, uh, well, after the first couple days, I knew <laughs> I'd be staying longer. And really, at that point, I did give it all up to uh, God. And I said, I will stay as long as I'm needed. And that's what I've done. And I'm so, so grateful for my husband, who's back at our home in North Carolina, taking care of everything there, our farm, our family, all the renovations that are now complete and waiting for me to return home next week. I told my parents last night as we were sitting around in their living room, just doing our nightly chit chat. I'm not excited to leave. I'm not gonna be leaving here like, woo, I can't wait to get out of here. No, 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 I told my parents, I'm actually going to be, I already am very sad to be leaving during this past journey of many, many, many weeks. My self and my parents have created a whole new relationship, whole new routine, structure, schedule. We've discovered so many things together, shared it all together. And it's really been the most beautiful time for me. And I believe for my parents as well. And I am going to be very sad to leave next week. But at the same time, I'm coming back after Christmas. So, and I will look forward to that, coming back. Absolutely. Whew, I'll bring my kitty cat back again. Two of my little dogs. And I'm hoping when I return after Christmas that I'll be able to see my other brothers and sisters to be able to, while I'm gone, be able to continue bringing peace and light to my parents' lives. You know I'm writing a book on cliches. I don't even know if it's a cliche, but the saying, family, can't live with them, can't live without them. That's like every family in this world, but also like most family in this world, we try to put on a facade of perfection and love. And the truth is it's hard to live with anybody in life. Especially when you don't live with them, you know? Most, most grateful. I just, I, I've told my parents this whole journey, all I've felt is uh, honor. I've never even felt honor in such ways. Honor. Love. And joy in the sharings that we've all shared together. So today will be my final headstone cleaning here until I return after Christmas. And I gotta tell you, when I leave the cemetery the last time to look up onto this hill where all of these headstones are and to see four, today will be five, to see four white headstones among so many dirty old headstones from the 1800s. It brings me joy. I am feeling this as a young child here, but what I've also learned on this journey with my parents is really not to assume anything. This has been a journey for myself of discovering, guess what? I'm not always right. 
in the way 